Hello, this is Nathan Jeffers with JeffersMedia.com, and I'm going to show you how I do my standard portrait editing in Lightroom 4. Recently, my friends Kristen and Kevin got engaged, which is really exciting. Kevin asked me to come out and take pictures of them while he proposed. Here I am hiding in the bushes here. And then eventually he told her that I was there, which was a, a good surprise. And we went out and took a more formal posed portrait in this really cool natural preserve area here. And uh, so I'm going to show you how I'm, I would go about editing this portrait here. Uh, this is one of the ones that I have yet to edit, so I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone. I should record a tutorial, and I need to get these portraits edited. So, yeah, let's begin. What I normally do when I'm editing portraits, I kind of work from the top down in Lightroom. And um, I work from the basic panel here down through to camera calibration. Normally I don't do too much with camera calibration, but down to the effects panel. Um, and then in each panel I also do the same thing. So I start with my white balance and then move down to the presence area. I just figure it's a good general workflow that each step of the way I get comfortable with say the white balance and then I move down, get comfortable with where I want the exposure and then a correct for that in the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks area. So as you can see, uh, this photo was a little cool. We are in the shade here, so the camera is um, trying to set the white balance for what the sun area is. So I'm just going to warm up that a little bit. That's looking a bit better. Maybe even a little bit more. Sometimes I go to the white balance area here and then just click shade and see what that does. That's maybe a little bit too much. I'll bring that back down. And then I tend to compare what it was with as shot. Um, another good way to do that is if you push the um, forward slash, or I guess backslash key, you can see the before and after. I'll set it back to custom. You can see before editing and after editing. And so that's always a good tool to be able to make sure that the changes you're making are what you wanted and they're not too overboard or uh, too close to what you originally had taken the photo as. And then I'm just going to pump up the exposure just a little bit here. It doesn't need too much. But as we look at our histogram here, you can see there's a lot of information in the lower mid-tones area. And that's because there's a lot of this gray color here and then you know in their clothes and stuff like that so we're getting a lot of that here I'm just gonna bring that up a little bit more bring up the contrast a little bit just to even out that and then I'm gonna bring back down the highlights because I don't want there to be too much blown out what we can do in Lightroom is if you hover over this triangle in the highlights area on your histogram you can see in red the areas where the there is no information left in the photo and they're just purely white. And you don't want to make sh you want to make sure that you don't have any areas being blown out as it's called when there's no information in the highlights. You want to make sure there's no areas in any detail, especially in any people uh, that are being blown out. That can cause issues later for printing and things like that. Um, and it just doesn't make for a very good image. I'm going to bring up the shadows so I can see a little bit more detail in the shadows. Bring down the blacks to give it a little bit more punch. And then I'm bringing up the clarity, which adds a bit more to the contrast between the pixel areas. We can actually see it very well over here in this bokeh of the trees. That's quite blurry there, but as it gets to the edges... But you can see as I lower the clarity, the areas between the white and the black get more gray. So the whites become more gray and the blacks become more gray. And then I, as I pump that up, the edges get more and more contrasty. It doesn't affect the the contrast of the entire image, it affects the contrast between 
those points. So as we zoom out here, that's like way overdone. And and this you see this effect a lot in in some very processed portraits where the clarity is up like a lot. I tend not to like that very much. I want to go for a more natural feeling image. This is maybe even a little bit too much, but I like it. It gives us a certain style. And then I'm just going to pump up the vibrance just a little bit more, get a little bit more in those uh, blue, purples, and then the in the kind of orange and greens uh, and yellows here. Anyway, that's already looking pretty good. I might bring my exposure back down. And that's why I work from the top down is once I've done some adjustments to maybe the tone or the presence, I would go back up and see, oh, I've maybe taken too much out of that. And then what I'll do is move down to my detail tab. I do sometimes I'll do stuff with the tone curve, which is a really really powerful curve editing tool. If you've ever played with curves in Photoshop, just adding a nice S curve here. You can do a lot of great stuff and you can actually do almost all of your color correction in this tab by selecting the channels and making adjustments to those specific channels. I'm going to actually just undo those. Okay, actually let's look at the before and after. Already that's almost night and day difference. It's just really warm and really captures the feeling of, you know, their happiness in this moment. So, as I was saying before, you can you can also do some selective color correction in the HSL color and black and white. Um, section here, split toning as well. That's a lot of the color correction areas. For this photo, particular photo, I'm kind of happy with where it is. And so I'm going to move on to the detail tab here. I just click this little box. That's the detail zoom area. And so I can see the area that I'm affecting. Normally I select the eyes because that's where we're drawn to naturally as humans. We're drawn to looking at people's eyes. So I'm going to sharpen up this area. Normally I choose an, a sharpening amount between 70 and 90. And then while I am adjusting the radius, I hold down the Alt or Option key. And I move it up and down and find a contrast balance that I'm happy with that I feel like selects the best lines that I'm trying to sharpen, which are the lines around the eyes. And then... With any sharpening, that uh, raises the amount of noise that's in the image. So I also reduce the noise. And then I'll zoom one to one here and then see what that looks like. If I take out, if I turn off the detail tab here, I can see my before and after. And that's looking pretty good. It just takes it from being slightly soft, a slightly soft image here to just bringing in a lot of that detail. You won't see a lot of difference when you turn it off and on if your image is not zoomed in all the way. Always make all of your detail adjustments, all of your sharpening adjustments when you're zoomed in 100%. Otherwise, you're going to over sharpen the image. Now moving on to lens corrections, I'm going to go to the profile tab here and then check enable profile corrections that just removes some of the distortion by that lens. It's automatically detected the make and model of the lens, which is really great. And then I'm going to actually turn down the vignetting correction because I like that vignetting. And then when I move into the effects panel here, I'm actually going to add a little bit more post crop vignetting, which if I had cropped the image, I can crop it down to like this. Obviously, I wouldn't have my vignetting from the actual lens. So what this allows me to do is add some vignetting just to the cropped area. So, and then that's another nice tool. If you double click on one of the sliders here, it will actually go back to reset to zero. And then I'm going to reset this crop. I'm going to add a little bit more vignette. Not too much. I'll move the midpoint in because I think it highlights them. It's almost lighting them in the middle of the picture. It's taking away some of the 
distractions there. Maybe I went a little bit too much. I'm always afraid to go too far in photo editing. That's already looking really good. Let me take a look at the before and after. That's looking really good. We got some of the detail back in, and I'm actually going to take down some of these highlights. This is the great thing about Lightroom 4 is you have the adjustment brush, and then you also have this um, graduated filter where you can make specific adjustments to uh, specific areas of the of the photo. And all of the adjustments that you're making match the basic panel here, which is really great. And then add some other features like sharpness, noise, uh, more and diffringe. So I'm going to take down some of the highlights in the top area here just because I lost them when I was correcting for their faces for Kevin and Kristen's faces. It's really not much, but I feel like it, let's see the before and after there. It's not much, but I feel like it gives a more balanced image and allows you to focus in on them. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, the grass over here is a little bit cool. Another great thing about Lightroom 4 is I can actually do individual temperature adjustments. So in the shade here, things are going to be a little bit more cool. And so I can paint in some more warmth. Now let's go really extreme so you can see the difference. Now that's obviously way too extreme. But if I just warm it up a little bit, that already gives me this nice warm feeling rather than a kind of dead, cool feeling that we had before. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Let's take a look at the before right here, the original settings from inside the camera, and here's the after. It's an overall sharper image, it's warmer, has a lot more contrast, and we're focusing in more on the subjects of our photo. So if you have any questions, you can leave a comment on the YouTube page of this video, or you can email me, Nathan, at jeffersmedia.com. And let me know if you have any questions about this tutorial, or you'd like to see me do another tutorial in Lightroom 4. And like me on Facebook, I'm at facebook.com slash jeffersmedia. And you can see more of my work there. Thanks for listening.